game can see the boxing boys. Welcome back, gang, for the first time and hopefully many more to come. Don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel and click on the notifications right here, this little bell, so you can get those emails every time we go. They're, they're paid enough money, so if they wanted to get away with something like that, there's definitely ways to get around it. You know, you can go to those people. These guys are making, I mean, so for myself personally, no, there's no way to beat those tests. You know, but I, I'm not in that circle of trying to beat a test. Of course. You know, so I mean, so I can't really say whether or not he was trying to cheat. What did, I mean, do I understand the whole Mexican meat having clombuterol in it? I could see it, I suppose. But I, I mean, I can't see a guy who's making that much money, again, who is an eight-figure athlete, not getting the best of the best in terms of his nutrition, in terms of his vitamins and things like that. So... But I'm not also in the business of calling somebody a, a liar or a cheater. I'm not in there with them. I, I, in terms of someone saying I can see track marks and see where the needle is injected, I, I mean, I think that's false. I don't think you can look at someone and say I can see where the hypodermic needle went to his arm. I don't, I don't see where that could come up. But, again, I, it, tough to say. So Canelo has said, and he's made it very clear, you know, I feel that Abel Sanchez is basically trying to get into my head. Uh, whenever Golovkin has said something, mm -hmm. Canelo has said, that's not Golovkin speaking. Um, his words were, he doesn't have the balls to say what he's saying. He's speaking basically on behalf of, of Abel Sanchez. Mm -hmm. At this point, I mean, we're talking three, four days before the fight. You've clearly gotten into Canelo's head, but yet it's still a topic that's being brought up. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like... Is it? Do you feel like maybe it's just getting old, or is are they continuing to get in his head and and piss Canelo off with these accusations and uh, allegations of him being a dirty fighter? I think that if there's something they can clearly tell it gets a rise out of him, you know, Abel Sanchez is going to keep pressing that button. You know, if it's going to get a rise on whether it's for the fight or it's just because they just don't like it, the camps don't like each other. You know, if, if they sit there, he said calling him an idiot would would bother him. He's going to call me to every chance he gets, right. whether or not it has something to do with the fight. He just doesn't like that person. So, I mean, that's what I think it is. I mean, he notices. I mean, Canelo knows it's a, it's a, touchy, it's a touchy subject for Canelo, so he's going to keep poking at it. You know, so that's what, that's what I think he's, he's kind of doing with it. But in terms of, like, for the fight, I think that they're both high enough, at, high enough caliber athletes where once the bell rings, you know, they're going to go to work and do the job they've been trained to do. He's not going to be sitting there thinking about, what Abel Sanchez says, he's not fighting Abel Sanchez. Of course. Now, that being said, obviously he's not fighting Abel Sanchez, but Abel Sanchez will be in the corner of Gennady Golovkin mm -hmm. come Saturday night. Um, what are your thoughts as far as trainers or promoters talking for the fighters? Because in the first fight, I personally, uh, I don't want to say I was bothered, but I didn't really like how much Oscar was talking on Canelo's behalf saying, oh, Canelo's going to go out there and get the knockout. Like, you know, if Canelo is going to go get the knockout, let him say that. Mm -hmm. If Triple G feels that um, Canelo is a dirty fighter, let him say mm -hmm. that. What are your thoughts when you have people uh, in the camp, part of the team, the promoters, the trainers, doing all this trash talking because at the end of the day, like you said, they're not the ones stepping into that square circle. Right. I understand that. and I can see where you're coming from. Um, it's tough to say because they, you know, their their job is to promote the fight. You know, the more people that watch that fight, the more money it's going in their pockets. I get it. So they're gonna they're gonna say those crazy that crazy shit. I mean, Golovkin's not a dude who talks a whole lot. He's you know he's known as the the nice guy. You know the good the good boy killer. You know mm -hmm. he's you know thank you very much. You know all, all that shit. So I mean I don't think he's gonna be the everyone talking. So therefore someone has to do that on his behalf in order to get some type of buzz going. You know because unfortunately you know what gets the most attention is going to be guys going into the ring, acting real uncharacteristic, getting real tough with people, you know, tough, you know, cursing people out, saying you're going to knock this person out, you're going to knock that person out. You know, it's a little less sometimes on the, the, the caliber of the fighter, you know. You know, just let the let their talent speak. And that's just, I mean, that's a personal point of view. But a lot of the casual fans, they they need a backstory, you know, or, or in order to run with. So if there's not a backstory, you just have a dude in Canelo who's just very good, and an unstoppable force at the time, like Lovkin, you know, they can't get the, the guy who watches, you know, baseball in order to say, let's, let's watch that boxing fight. They right. need to hear, these guys really hate each other. They think, this of guy course. said he's a cheater. This guy said that he's old. You know, if they get that, that backstory that kind of allows them to attach to something. 
so they can, you know, a different narrative, come at it from a different way. You know, someone can pick a side a little bit easier. They come in and they put money on it a little bit differently. Of course. Now, obviously, they. Uh, to me, honestly, I don't think they've done uh, the best job promoting the fight. We've seen a little more uh, recently, but definitely uh, not having a press conference uh, mm -hmm. kind of hurt. Um, at least I think, in my opinion, it mm -hmm. did. Um, no press tour. So I feel things of that nature, but... I gotta ask, so we've been talking about the rematch, how'd you see the first fight play out? And what were your thoughts going into the fight and after the fight, how'd you see it play out and what were your thoughts then? The, the, the first fight, I, I really thought that Canelo was just gonna be too small. You know, the guy moving up, a little bit shorter of a dude, I just thought he was gonna be too small, he was gonna get outpowered and, and taken out. And then as the fight you know, progressed, I mean, I could definitely see the draw. I, I had it for Golovkin, even though I have Canelo winning the rematch, I had it for Golovkin the first time watching it through. Um, but again, I, I was I was more surprised by Canelo's performance and seeing how he dealt with someone who's, who's that you know that caliber of a puncher and at a higher weight class. Of course, a true middleweight, a natural middleweight, somebody who's been mm -hmm. there their whole career. Now, I mean, Canelo, uh, the two fights lead into the Golovkin fight. He won a title at 154. That's right. Goes up ten and a half pounds for a Mexican fight with Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. Yeah. and then comes down uh, to 160 for the Gennady fight. Now, a lot of people say that Canelo looks smaller now than he did in the first fight. Um, obviously, they're still fighting at the same weight. Right. However, I feel that this year off may have helped Canelo build and grow into a true middleweight what are your Absolutely. thoughts what are your thoughts on that yeah I, I agree with that 100 percent. you know he's just he's settled into the weight you know he's uh yeah i do agree though he does look a little bit leaner i would say leaner which just means if you're coming in the same weight just mean he put on more muscle and, and took the water off that muscle so i think he's gonna he's gonna be a full-fledged middleweight in there you're gonna see two guys who are familiar with each other as well so you know, they're, I think it's gonna it's gonna start off a lot, you know, very fast. And it's gonna be an exciting fight. You know, I know you said before that there's a possibility that Lemieux and O'Sullivan could be the fight tonight, but I'm not counting out, you know, that main event for being a lot of fireworks between, you know, Canelo taking everything that Abel Sanchez said personally. Oh, absolutely. And you not. know, just the way that they, they they both fight. You know, um, I think that Canelo might box a little less, and this one might actually th sit down and throw with him a little bit, which. Which could be dangerous because again, I've seen at 154 pounds, I've seen you know Canelo hurt before. When I think he fought Cotto, one of the Cotto brothers, you know, I think it was the first round of uh, yeah. one of those fights, he yeah. did get hurt yeah, while he, he pretty, hurt. Yeah. Pretty, pretty significantly. Now you're in there with a much bigger guy and a much bigger puncher, you know. So if he sits in there and bangs with him, he could definitely get hurt. But I, I still, you know, I still have him uh, being hungry enough to take the W. You know, and I think uh, one thing with Canelo that you kind of just touched on a little bit, I, he's a very prideful individual. Right. Extremely prideful. Um, I was actually shocked because he understands English very fluently and he can speak it, but I, when the cameras are rolling, if he doesn't know how to say something fluently, perfect, uh, mm -hmm. to his liking, he'd rather you go through his translator because that's how prideful. He doesn't want to yeah. come off as being ignorant or come off as, right. you know, uh, you have it. That being said, I feel that Abel's words obviously have gotten to him, and mm -hmm. this being uh, such a huge holiday, I mean, it's the Independence Day weekend for Mexico. That's right. So I feel that he has no choice but to come up there and, uh, you know, put on the show. Hey, family. Yes, yes, YouTube has been cutting funding to uh, their channels as of late and with net neutrality. Uh, going through th its process. The internet is changing. If you want to keep your favorite channel intact, coming up with tons of content, and plus get hours and hours of extra content, head over to patreon.com forward slash the boxing voice uh, to become a member of the TBV family and help support the channel. Peace.